Hey, welcome to my show. And today what we have are, are some examples of the Dunham uh, thermostatic radiator trap. This is the half-inch version, probably the most common version there is out there of uh, this variety of trap. And Dunham itself is uh, very common, uh, at least in my area. And uh, this is probably my first video on it. This particular one is the Dunham 1E, and I will show you that the, that really doesn't make a whole lot of difference um, with the variations uh, that you'll find. There's an example, that's the inlet. Let's see if we can see the internal parts, and we cannot, that's a shame. Um, that is the outlet. You can see that's a relatively uh, flat disc, rather, than anything else. That's, it looks like a date code. I think you can see examples of where older date codes have been scrubbed off, not uh, too thoroughly. And uh, so this is a, a well-used mold and um, has a relatively uh, shallow uh, profile. And it comes in uh, several varieties, uh, straight away, um, uh, left-hand side, right-hand side, and so forth. And they uh, they could be uh, very useful traps to uh, use in applications. This is the Dunham Number One steam trap, uh, Charles A. Dunham Company, Incorporated of Marshalltown, Iowa. And I think you can read the patents. The earliest patent here is from 1903. 1904 and so forth and the latest patent on this particular example is 19, 1915 and it is basically the same profile except the outlet is a little bit smaller and we'll get into that in a bit so in order to uh, work on this trap uh, my recommendation would be to get a socket that goes over top of this, and you'll probably need either, uh, uh, you can start out with an inch and three quarters, and that should fit over most of these. It does not fit over the earlier versions. Uh, this is a little bit too snug. You might want to get something like um, an, a... Uh, uh, 13 16ths might work or the metric uh, equivalent which I believe is 45 millimeters uh, let's say you get the top off and this is what you're gonna find you're gonna find a uh, thermostatic disc And that is this the uh, top seat, top teeth disc, and there is what it uh, goes up against. Uh, that is a non-removable seat, this version. More mold marks there. This one's obviously not been used at all. And the way you can rebuild them is uh, one source is you can get an aftermarket product usually from Barnes and Jones. This is their Barnes and Jones handbook and there are multiple traps available from various manufacturers and we turn to Dunham Bush. So you got a Dunham, you got a Dunham Bush and you got a Mepco. They're all about the same. Mepco is still in existence, the Marshalltown Engineering Products Company and if you have a 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, or 1E, all use the same um, internal component and all need a new cover. And they all have internal seats. Um, only the number one requires a different um, uh, cartridge unit and uh, it has the small orifice, and we'll get into that in a bit. And you've got a couple of other versions. V uh, stands for victory, which uh, means it was during World War II when they uh, stopped using brass because brass, of course, is a strategic alloy. 
and uh, steel was cheaper. So let's go on here. What do we have? It calls out for a 150. Now we can see that it has all the different sizes, 1A through 1E, and it says caution a new uh, Barnes and Jones trap cover may be necessary. We opened it up and we'll find the new cartridge inside. Very similar to all of their other cartridge. They just changed the uh, spring size and depth and they changed the outlet and there's your gasket which goes up against uh, the outlet. So usually, usually I like to put a smear of any C's on there and this then goes inside there. Now, of course, this particular cover can't be used with that. So when they talk about a new cap, you have to buy this trap cover. And uh, this is what's inside. This is very old stock and you'll see what I mean in a moment. It's been discolored by sitting on the shelf for a long time. And so 150, Barnes and Jones, and it's been discolored. And then you have this gasket with material, which is, this is, looks like friggin' cardboard. The, the newer ones uh, have a more updated gasket. I think they, uh, the original gaskets probably had asbestos in it. So if you got those, well, there you go. But um, this is one example. Definitely want to use anti-seas on this and the threads. And as per usual, you want to line this up. You want the uh, spring goes inside that uh, uh, space inside on the inside of the cap. And you put this down. You can see I have to push down for a bit and crank it home using an adjustable wrench, which is, should be fine, but I would hold back on that. This with another wrench and tighten her down and your trap is rebuilt with Barnes and Jones. The one disadvantage of using the Barnes and Jones is you've restricted the outflow. And so you restricted the capacity of the trap to handle air and water, but it is repaired. How would you know the trap is bad? Well, there are two ways traps can fail, either open or closed. Uh, the way if it fails closed, pretty straightforward, the unit doesn't, doesn't heat. Um, now, if a trap fails in the open position, it could cause other traps to look like they have failed because it, the steam will fill the dry return and prevent the air from leaving uh, that particular unit. So sometimes a that can be tricky. Um, so the uh, failed open trap is usually the one that heats great and uh, affects the other ones. Um, what you can do, another another product, excuse me, another product would be by the uh, Tungstall Corporation, uh, very similar to um, uh, Barnes and Jones, slightly different design but basically does the same thing. You have an internal part which um, opens and closes due to uh, 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 temperature and pressure. And this again fits inside. And then you get, you can probably use the Barnes and Jones cap or you can buy the um, Tunstall equivalent, very handsome, I must say. Of course, it's not fair to compare that older one with this one. Uh, this one's got a nice uh, uh, plating on it. Uh, it's got a um, nice gasket. So does the Barnes and Jones. And, and then this goes on top like so. And you have to sort of push down and twist 
Again, I would use anti-seize on the various surface, just a little smear, and your trap is repaired. And you can tell immediately, there's the number, you can tell immediately that the trap has been rebuilt. Pops open like that. So those are your two alternatives if you want to use aftermarket products. But here's the thing. Uh, Dunham Bush is still made, essentially, by uh, the MEPCO. Uh, and you can get a cap and disc, a number 1E cap and disc. Uh, this would be um, marked as MEPCO. But this is what it would look like. 1E Marshalltown, brand new. And this comes as a unit, and you take the old cap off, put the new cap on. Again, it's the same dimensions, uh, one and three quarters. Tighten her down, and it's done. And you might not have the clearance to put the cap um, on there. So this is one example. Another way is that if, um, let's see, where is it? Darn it. Ah, here it is. If you uh, take the old cap off um, and you're very lucky, you can get a wrench, half inch wrench, which may fit in this spot. I uh, know you see the solder does change the, uh, the fit of the wrench. And this can come off. You can remove this capsule by itself that's the uh, solder that they made when they when they were making these they would fill this with the alcohol mixture it would it'd be in a boiled bath and they would solder this up uh, when uh, in the production line and then stamp it with a date code and you can see it's slightly depressed and as the steam hits it uh, it flashes this to a uh, 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 gas inside expanding this disc and uh, causing the bottom of this disc to uh, uh, shut against uh, steam, but it allows the air and the water to pass. So that's, of course, this cap has been used. Um, and if you're able to get this out, then it's much cheaper to be able to get these, but you're not guaranteed that this is going to come apart so easily. Um, so you can buy a sort of assortment. You can buy a cap assembly. You can buy just the internal parts. And then you can, of course, have backup of either your Barnes and Jones or, or Tunstall, depending on what you need to do. So those are examples of how you can uh, rebuild these traps. Of this, I would recommend sticking with the uh, OEM product. Uh, you're more likely uh, to have um, more or less consistent results. No dig against either Tunstall or Barnes and Jones. That's they're perfectly fine. No, no dig against there. So yeah, and uh, so what we have. Let's take a closer look at this. Uh, this is the number one. And as I showed you earlier with the booklet, the uh, number one is gonna require a different code. And the same thing with the Tunstall. The Tunstall also makes uh, an equivalent which will fit this trap. And you do, you're not gonna find a MEPCO equivalent for this. Uh, you'll have to go to the aftermarket. Uh, you may decide just to simply replace the trap with um, a more modern version. Uh, your choice, depending on how easily things come apart and your individual situation. That's a judgment call that I won't be able to make for you. But uh, once you get the cap off, you will see that since you're done, I'm number one, and I've measured the internals. And you can see it's a much smaller hole than that. And you can see that this disc is definitely different too. That comes rather than the rounded, um, you know, let me get this apart, rather than the uh, 
sort of rounded capsule. This is more, uh, comes to a sharper end and the disc is not as, uh, doesn't move. Like this one, this one has the, the disc is able to uh, shift a little bit to account for variations. And well, let's see, where is that? Where is it? Ah, there you are. I think I've showed you this before. This is the uh, Dunham Handbook. Uh, C.A. Dunham Company uh, from 1922. And like the first page, is the Dunham radiator trap. And I think if this, this was probably one of the first, if not the first, and that's the patent date on this uh, from uh, 1903. And... Uh, so everybody else was trying to figure out ways of not impinging on their patent and had come up with different um, products which were not satisfactory. Uh, Charles Dunham, there he is, there's his message there. And uh, he was the engineer that uh, helped develop this. You can see that this is, this is the trap. Uh, the only difference is there's a slight uh, difference of the uh, seat there. And this is, let me go back and show, you can freeze frame and read on its operation. It is pretty um, definitive, much more uh, eloquent than I could hope to achieve in this video. There is how... It's supposed to operate, the steam entering, going through, and eventually getting to the trap and the trap shutting, and you're able to control the amount of steam with the valve. So a lot of these valves would, would work for decades and years because the steam would never get to it because you could control it with the valve. Eventually, though, if the steam got to it, the trap would, would, would cycle. So the idea is you wanted to not have it cycle so often, and so this would last a good long time. All right, well, I hope this video uh, helps. Um, and I uh, hope I haven't left anything out. Uh, but if I have, or if you have any comments or questions, uh, please leave them below. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.